you to search the premises and look at your opponent's hands. So that's going to be interesting to see throughout the game how he responds to these sorts of plays. And he also has a powerful Jex attack option if Israel is to commit too many energy to his own Pokemon. Yeah. Speaking of Israel, you just saw him there. He has absolutely no slap to himself. Had one of the most insane regionals run I ever saw with uh, Darkrai and Veltal variants yeah. uh, a, little, a little while ago. And still, right now, proving his worth and just is in this win and in round now. And he could very easily still make day two. Yeah, you basically can't mention Israel Sosa without mentioning Dark Pokemon <laughs> in the same sentence. It just simply isn't the case. Today, however, he's not playing Dark Pokemon. What? No, wait, still he is. Might <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. <laughs> wait, he is. Don't worry, everyone. He is uh, playing Sil Valley, but he is also playing Zoroark GX in the deck as well. I, I actually thought for a second that I might have been <laughs> hallucinating or something. Yeah, I'd be going there, Joe. No, don't worry. There's still Zoroarks in his build, but he is playing Metal Energy in his deck. So okay. uh, he has lots of this metal support. So a few people have actually been bringing this archetype. We've already shown a Sil Valley list on the stream already earlier in the day. So Israel again. Um, I know he's been testing this archetype a lot. There's been some social media with him posting about this deck, and uh, he's actually brought it to the tournament today. Yeah, it's a really, really cool archetype to see. I've already mentioned, uh, I think, a couple of times before, I actually like the Valley quite a lot inherently as a card. I think in, in a vacuum, it's very, very strong. I know it's. I think it's one of these cards that has quite mixed opinions. I think no one says it's outright bad, but some people think, oh, this is actually really, really good. Yeah. And some people said, think, I'm not entirely convinced yet. And there's actually things that you can look at the card and think, well, this is actually similar to a Yvel Tolly X. It's I like the new age Yvel Tolly X in many ways. So Sosa's trying his best to still play Yvel Tol <laughs> whenever he can. Yeah, it uh, should come as a surprise to no one, I guess. We do say that uh, actually Zach did have a mulligan, so we'll see if he's able to find something this time. Showing a double colours to the camera there. <laughs> yeah, this is going to be an interesting matchup. For Zach, of course, he does have the option to spam Acer Rollers whenever possible. I think that's going to be one of the biggest interactions we're going to see throughout the series. Whenever Zach is able to hit Acer Roller, it could be a big swing in his favour. Israel does have one one-hit KO option available to him, and that's with the uh, Sil Valley's GX attack. But beyond that, he may be capped and looking for two hit KOs throughout the game. He does have tech cards like Cabalion, um, which we know in the late game can do a big push of damage. But overall, a big factor of this game is going to be how often Zach can get Acer Rollers off. Yeah, interestingly, well, Israel, unlike a lot of the other Metal Toolbox decks, he's actually opting not to play uh, Sailor Steeler. This is something that we've seen quite frequently in, in a lot of the other lists. And But he is playing Necrozma GX. I'm almost certain that might come up, come up at some point. Yeah, that could come up. And he's also playing one other tech GX Pokemon, and that's Turtonator. We've just mentioned how insane Shell Trap can be. That's an attack that has colourless attack cost, which means he can be splashed in as he has been in this deck um, to, again, really hurt these Acer Roller variants. So this could be a huge thing for him. We see him. He's got the turn one Bridget. Optimal stuff for him. He's got himself another type null. He's got himself a Zerua on the bench as well. And he's going to have his pick of whichever GX he wants to slap down on the bench straight away. Yeah, we are off to an absolutely great start here. There it is. Which, which of these two players do you guys at home think will be able to make it today too? Will it be Israel Sosa of the US or will it be Zap Massage of Canada? You can, uh, do, you can tweet us using the hashtag uh, play Pokemon if you, if you wish to. Just uh, so put, put your votes in, uh, but uh, other than that, I'm really looking forward to watching the rest of this game. So we are going to see a basic energy attachment, and it passes over to Zach now. Um, he does put down the Young Goose, but we just saw the prize cam that the Gumshoes GX is in the prize cards, which is a little bit unfortunate for him. Not amazing in this matchup because it rarely gets the one-hit KOs unless Israel is stacking energy on something like that Necrozma potentially. But uh, we are going to see him simply attach to his Wimpod and go for the end straight off the bat here. Yeah, I think if we could talk about Necrozma here, I think we just have to draw attention to it. the main thing, or the only thing Israel will be really, really using it for is, of course, for this uh, Black Ray GX attack. It's got absolutely one of the most... I think this is one of the GX attacks when I saw, I think I had the biggest reaction to it in the sense of that is immensely powerful. For free colorless energy, it does 100 damage to each of your opponent's GX and the EX Pokemon they have out on the field. Yeah, it's a really powerful GX attack. We know in Expanded it is like the go-to GX attack for many variants because you have the option to use Dimension Valley. Not quite as powerful in this uh, day and age in Standard, but you do still have so much energy acceleration from the Sil Valley in general that it's still a very efficient attacker. So we are going to see Zach simply use his wimp out ability to jump into the Tapu Koko and pass it back over to Israel here, who finds himself the Silvalli GX. Zach is going to make sure he knows about this card. Yeah. Uh, not everyone's going to be playing this sort of archetype. It does take a lot of guts to bring a new deck to a tournament as big as this, but Israel's going for it, and Zach's just going to have to refresh his memory. Yeah, he's like, what was this deal again? <laughs> yeah. So we do see... Uh, Israel, he's going to get himself an energy in the discard pile with the Professor Sycamore, which is great stuff for him. He also was able to hit a double colorless energy, so he can use the gyro unit to get the free retreat on the otherwise two retreat cost type null and uh, 
jump into the active position, get a knockout on this Tapu Koko, and also start setting up his yeah. other type null on the bench. And already in this very early turn in the game, we can see just like one of the facets of Sil Valley just showing how useful it is. Just the ability giving all but your basic Pokemon free retreat. So that even though type null would normally have a retreat cost of two, doesn't matter. Just evolving the bench Sil Valley, able to retreat into it and get the attack off straight away. Oh, wow. Oh. Okay, so it was just a Professor Kakui for two cards. He did find himself an Ultra Ball, though. So Zack is going to be able to um, find himself a Golisopod. He does have Float stone in hand so he can keep the pressure on here which is a huge thing for him otherwise without that professor kakui he could have been in big trouble but fortunately for him he has found himself the Golisopod. he's going to keep the pressure up responding on israel's main attacker as of right now of course but uh, i wonder how much longer his hand can see him through for the next few turns yeah i feel like one thing that's going in zach's favor right now and <laughs> zach again just making absolutely <laughs> sure that the thing isn't a threat i think he's just might be really the gx attack just thinking if that can one shot him but of course the rebel gx attack for again for three colors a really great cost but it does 50 damage times the number of uh, opponents bench pokemon so right now only going to be doing 50 not a threat to glycopod and interestingly we do see the first impression for 120 damage we know that zach's other card in his hand is a guzma so instead of uh, holding the double colorless for potentially armor press to finish off the sil valley next turn he says you know what i've got the guzma in my hand anyway that's the only option i currently have i'll probably be doing that next turn yeah absolutely it'll be interesting to see how israel responds as well wow. so with an ace of roller <laughs> that's how he responds he plays two of his own copies of Ace of Roller, and it's so great in this archetype because you do have the inbuilt acceleration from the Sil Valley itself. So both players opting to choose to play this card, and it is a big swing here. So Israel's main attacker was heavily damaged. Now it's Zax that's very heavily damaged, and he's just picked up an Ace of Roller as well. <laughs> Uh, Ace, um, Ace of Roller was going on here, and this is really showing that the pa any card which is able to pick up Pokemon from the field is insanely powerful and yeah. this is really sort of demonstrating why <laughs> it's a big top deck from zach and he's going to simply respond he attached the double colors to the bench which means that now he can go for uh, the armor press attack for 100 damage which is exactly what he's going to do uh, great response from zach good top deck keeps him in the game yeah absolutely now one thing important thing to note is some people might be wondering oh why didn't you use first impression there because you obviously brought the glycopod out that turn well he, because the wimpod was in the active and then it was evolved into the glycopod the first impression extra damage uh, trigger doesn't happen essentially yeah so that's important to know, and that's why he did the armor press instead. So again, Israel, he's able to put down a Kabalion, which is a big thing. He's also found himself two evolutions for his benched uh, GX Pokemon. We're going to see the trade there, getting rid of the Psychic Memory. Not going to be great in this matchup, Indeed for sure. Not. Uh, so um, we saw, I think he attached a basic energy to his Necrozma on the bench. And uh, we are going to see the Sil Valley continue to use Turbo Drive for a 120 all over again. And also committing an attachment to his bench with that acceleration. Well, that was going to be 130 because the, the choice oh, yeah. is still on there Sorry. and then it well, well, would be 150 but then of course the armor press kicks in yeah. reducing it by 20. And when you are back to Zach's side we see just a Sycamore there and uh, is he able to see what he needs? <sighs> Finally Ooh. bailed out. I mean he was just sat on nothing but that Guzma so it's a big draw from Zach. He's looks like he's got himself a ball switch card. He has a float stone on his current Golisopod so potentially he could be going for some uh, first impressions on another Golisopod if he's able to draw into it. Well he does have an Ultra Ball so I think in yeah. Deejo, that is what he's doing and he's got a grass energy ready in hand as well so yeah there's the ultra ball gonna it's a card that was going to be the super rod and was and the n and then he's going to grab the glycopod and he'll be able to retreat into it well we should make sure to evolve first to actually <laughs> yeah. do the thing as we just mentioned so it's a fast-paced action here both players looks like in fact zach's going to go for the remorade here so we could be seeing a crossing cut gx in order to take the knockout this turn interesting yeah that would also work of course and then yeah, although that would up, use up his gx stack the rest of the game he might maybe would have preferred to save that to take a one-hit knockout on the tapu later later on but maybe if he decides that's the best thing to do then that's what he's uh, got to do yeah we know he has the rescue stretcher in his hand i think there's an octillery in there from an earlier turn so maybe he's trying to make his hand more sustainable yeah. for the future turn so we are going to see the use of the crotting cut uh, crossing cut GX to finish off Israel Sil Valley. He's going to take two prizes. Didn't quite pull out the gum shoes, but he's already brought up the young goose as a sacrificial lamb in yeah. the first place. Israel promotes the Cabalion, which typically has a two retreat cost, but you know he's got that other Sil Valley in play, which allows him to make these sorts of luxury plays just to show off. Hey, I have this. Why don't I just use it? Yeah, exactly. To put, put off the hard decision making so <laughs> I can think about more important stuff. There is another Ultra Ball from Israel. I'm going to discard it to be a field blower and a sycamore. Uh, I'm not sure, entirely sure what he's uh, going to go for here. It looks like to be like another type null. He just wants to make sure he keeps a constant stream of Sil Valley. It's obviously the main f thing that makes his deck work as efficiently as it does. So it's important to have as much access to that as possible. And he does have the other double colors as well. So this Young Goose is going to hit the discard pile. Oh no, not even the Young Goose. Nope. The Glycopod <laughs> is going to hit the discard pile because there is the Guzma bringing it up, switching into the Sil Valley, and now the Turbo Drive will pick up the knockout on the Glycopod, but not before attaching in energy. Yeah, so one more attachment. You can see this is why the Sil Valley, many players deem it such a great card. 
card. I'm part of that camp. I think uh, Sil Valley GX is such a powerful card because you get inbuilt energy acceleration. Israel hasn't missed a beat in terms yeah. of attacking. And even with an Ace Roller where you almost minus attachments from your own board, he hasn't missed a step because every single turn he's got extra energy f into play thanks to Turbo Drive. Yeah. You know what Sil Valley GX reminds me of in terms of the whole why it's so strong? It reminds me of why Mega Main Netric EX mm -hmm. performs so well as a, as a card for... Because even then, for that card, you needed to be able to attach a Spirit Link and you needed to Mega Evolve. And it sure, that attached two energy and the energy cost was uh, one less, although it was a basic plus something mm -hmm. else. So it's even still a, a, about the same level of flexibility. But that deck was really strong for that exact same reason. It was just, you know, constant never missing a beat and yeah. one thing leads you to the next. And Sil Valley is doing the exact same thing here. It's interesting that Zach is playing not only Octillery, but also a Rangaroo. So we're going to first see a couple of cards from the Abyssal Hand here. Drew into an N. He does have a Guzma, but he doesn't have any Ball Search cards to maybe get him into a Golisopod. So potentially he's going to uh, try and refresh his hand. We do see that indeed. Ending himself to four, Israel to three. Both players, of course, have Pokemon on their bench that can help them get more cards through the trade on Israel's side. And Zach still has the Instruct available to him. So let's see if Zach's going to be able to draw into a Floatstone as well as... A another Galissapod to keep attacking here. Yeah, for me, I think it's very telling that a lot of the decks that are performing well are the decks that have these built-in sort of draw engines because yeah. in, as long as it is around in the game, it will be one of the most impactful cards in the game. So if you can build your deck in a way where it reduces that impact, you are a lot more likely to win. And yeah. we can see that playing out here. And it's one of those things where um, when we had Versus Seeker in the format, there wasn't always Octillery in all sorts of decks. There wasn't always a Rangaroo in all sorts of decks because you naturally had three or four more outs every time you got end to a low hand size. But now that decks have had to adapt, they have to play these cards to make sure that they can sustain themselves even when taking multiple prizes. Zach got himself a Golisopod and got himself an Ultra Ball where he can thin two cards and now he's going to get a big Instruct here so potentially still can hit the Floatstone. Yeah, not only that, but after he did say that as an instructor, we'll be able to Abyssal Hand as well, because I don't believe he's done that either. So the Zach with like, the double whammy of draw here is going to have a really good chance of seeing the, that float zone he needs. So here is the instruct. Three cards to see what he can get. Just energy cards. I don't. I think he did use the... Oh, oh he's going to yeah. concede. Wow, that's a big concede. Zach trying to buy himself as much time as possible, seeing the Israel side of the board. It was only going to get stronger. He was going to take one more prize. He was going to get more energy on the board with the turbo drive finishing off his turn, as well as the fact that he could have more manual attachments in the turn. He could do so much in his turn and simply because Zach didn't have anything to respond with he felt he was too far behind let's move on to game two yeah. so that must have, he must have already used the uh, abyssal yeah. hand then I guess I think he used it uh, before the end he actually abyssal handed into it I think previously he only had the Guzma available so okay. yeah out of draws there even though he plays both of those <laughs> yeah. set up Pokemon and uh yeah, Israel really demonstrating how dangerous that deck can be. One Ace Arola was such a big impact, I have to say. And uh, he does play two copies in his list. So um, pulling out all the stops here, Israel, and he's really demonstrating why he is doing so well with his archetype. Yeah, I could not agree more. Now, we were talking earlier about uh, tech Pokemon. One Pokemon which we've seen in a lot of the these sort of either Sil Valley or sort of Metal Toolbox lists is, of course, this Kartana GX. But we've not actually seen anyone use it yet, I believe. No, it's one of those things. We had the poll with the Ultra Beast. What's your favorite? Everyone said Kartana GX. Israel is playing it. Uh, we know that Zach is playing four double colorless energy in his list, and yet we still haven't seen it into play. Oftentimes, Israel has been opting to have more attackers on his board throughout the game. He's opting to have the Necrozma as a threat, yep. um, just because it basically prevents Zach from trying to get multiple GXs into play, punishing him for putting down things like Tapu Lele in the late game, giving him plenty of options. So um, it looks like Kartana is one of these big swing cards for specific matchups, not necessarily this one, uh, but it's still just a great utility card to have in your deck. Yeah, definitely. Also, I am still holding out to see a game being yeah. won with the Blade uh, GX attack. So for those of you who don't know what it does, Blade GX just simply states, take a prize. Yeah, for just one metal energy. So if it's a sudden death situation, he's your best friend. <laughs> Absolutely. Just imagine facing your opponent in sudden death and your opponent opens Kartana and you just think, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So it looks like Zach went first. He could only attach a double colorless energy. He has got himself a Golisopod though. So maybe a little bit more tanky at the very least. He doesn't have any energy. So right. he's going to try and stall the Kabalion here with a Guzma play and pass it back over. This could be really awkward for it Zach. Could, it could. And the problem is Israel has a draw supporter, but it's an N. <laughs> yeah. And Okay. Wow, bailing out Zach here, that's insane. They yeah. both look at each other and say, well, I actually had no choice. I yeah. have to go for the end here, even yeah. though I could start pressuring you. I know you have nothing, but guess what? 
Neither do I. Yeah, so it's one of the situations where and kind of hoping, helping both players out uh, right there and sort of. It, it, it is nice in a sense because it means that we're actually going to hopefully see a full game play out. But yeah. uh, if you're Israel, you've got to be thinking, ah, missed opportunity. So a big thing for Israel here is if he can find himself type nulls. This is often the means of retreating in his deck. It's all via the Silvalli GX and Guzmas. That's his only other option for retreating. So if he can find himself some type nulls, he's going to be able to move this Kabalion in the following turns. He can also maybe look to get some attachments into play. He still could evolve up into the Zoroark GX as well for more draws. So plenty more he could be getting this turn. It's like we could be getting, but nothing of energy. Actually, yeah. Nothing actually did get. Just another Registeel. No type no odds, uh, as you just said, uh, importantly. That is a very unfortunate uh, draw for Israel. And I mean, he's going to use the quick guard attack, uh, but it's not going to make much of a difference because uh, it only prevents uh, Kabalion from being damaged by a basic Pokemon, and uh, Glycopod is definitely not a basic Pokemon. <laughs> That's very true. It looks like Zach had a really interesting choice there. He had a handful of different supporters, but no energy. He opted to use the Bridget, so he won't be attacking again this turn, but it means that he's starting to develop his own side of the board. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. Do you, do you think he maybe misread the Cabalion, or do you think he just thought to himself it's more worth setting up that setting that up anyway? Yeah, I think it's just important for him to set up his own side of the field. I think maybe with an ultra all he could lower his hand size enough yeah. for an Orangaroo draw. But I think overall he just wants to get his own board developed while Israel isn't drawing much. I mean, it is a decision that could pay off in spades for Zach, as we can see Israel's hand right now. It's two Guzmas and two Metal Energy. Which yeah. is not very good. And uh, we are going to see Israel does draw. He gets himself a Kartana there GX, which is actually really big in this spot. Yeah, it is huge in this spot. And perfect timing, considering we just mentioned it. There it goes uh, the... Uh, I can't remember the name of the ability now, but of course, as we just mentioned, it does let you discard a special energy. Yeah, a slice off. Slice off. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Brutal. <laughs> so we are going to see uh, Israel trying to target this Remoraid as quickly as possible whilst getting a turbo arm in there with his Registeel, dealing the 30 damage. Goes back over to Zach. He has plenty of options here. He has Ultra Ball. He has uh, Professor Sycamore. He has Ace roller if he wants to pick up this uh, Remoraid, but at the moment still whiffing on basic energy to get this um, Glissapod attacking. So we are going to see an Ultra Ball before anything else. Um, he could be going for something like the Octillery or maybe even a second Glissapod GX, depending on which direction he wants to go here. Typically drawing ca cards is always the best policy, so I would be surprised if he didn't go for the Octillery here. And he did indeed yeah. do <laughs> just that. <laughs> drawing cards is really, really good in Pokemon. <laughs> Who would have funk? <laughs> <laughs> so, here we go. There is the Ultra Ball. Going to grab himself Artillery. He still has a supporter that he can use. Um, he's just making sure, yep, that's the target I chose. And um, he's going to be able to evolve into the Artillery this turn, trying to give himself as many outs as possible to start finding switch cards in addition to basic energy. Just keep attacking with this Glycopod. He's going to attach the Choice Band to that Glycopod as well. Giving it a little bit more damage in mm -hmm. later later turns. Obviously not too useful on a 130 HP ready steal. One of the big selling points of that card is that you can take one hit KOs. Um, uh, well, you can't take a one hit yeah. KO with Golisopod, I should say. He was holding on to a Professor Kukui, but he didn't uh, fancy his chances of just drawing two cards into exactly a switch card and a grass energy. And yeah. I don't blame him. I don't blame him. And also, he does think he didn't let alone... Never mind not drawing off two cards. He didn't draw either of those off no. the seven cards. Yeah, so we are going to see an Ultra Ball here. Maybe there's a few more cards he can thin from his deck to maybe get an Abyssal Hand and get a little lucky off one or two cards. We'll have to see here, but it could be, again, another slow tempo turn for Zach. Yeah, absolutely. The one saving grace for Zach here is, as we already mentioned a couple of times, Israel was not able to find type nulls in the last few mm -hmm. turns. Here comes another choice band going down onto the Golisopod, and yeah, there's going to be an Abyssal Hand for, it looks to be two here, and he does, does draw Choice Ooh, band grass, grass energy. energy, but he still can't move out of the active position, so no. he's just going to have to be content with passing here and uh, getting rid of the artillery next turn from Israel could be like such a big play, but it yeah. doesn't look like he has anything going on in his own hand, so he's going to stick with the turbo arm, just doing 30. Yeah, Goes it, back over to Zach. It is close, but no cigar, and yeah, if we're going back to Israel's side, it's, <laughs> more, like, it's more like nothing at all. It's uh, just the 30 damage, not even being able to attach anything. And there's the float stone yeah, as well. The very next card. <laughs> it's always the way, isn't it, in it, Pokemon? It is. Uh, we are going to see, regardless, there's going to be a Guzma being played targeting down the Zerua, it looks like, so um, Zach can take a cheeky single prize and also start denying Israel of draw throughout the game, which is uh, really good for him. When you know your opponent's dead drawing or doesn't have many options, the best policy for you is to limit how many outs they can do to get out of this situation. Yeah, exactly. How, mu how much do you want to see that this is going to be a Zorok now? 
Oh, oh no. <laughs> so, that would have been too perfect. We're going to see a Guzma once again, Israel targeting down the artillery. So he's doing the same thing that Zach just did, trying <laughs> to deny the draw engine on both sides. He's been chipping away at this artillery, and finally it's going to go down, netting Israel a prize in response. And uh, I, Zach is going to bring in the Tapu Koko here. I do believe that the prize he just picked up was a Type Null as well. So obviously it's not ideal to mm -hmm. really want a draw supporter, but at least he can bench that and then maybe next turn get a Silver Valley and really start to get himself going. So uh, the Tapu Koko being active does mean that he can simply uh, freely retreat so that he can activate the secondary effect of First Impression for maximum damage. Still not getting a knockout, but still a good chunk being dealt to this Registeel. Uh, looks like... Israel takes an Acer Roller off the top, which isn't too bad either. Nope. And uh, he's going to re-promote a new Registeel, put down a Type Null this time and attach an energy to that and uh, keep putting pressure on here. Yeah, that's actually a really, really good uh, top deck for Israel there. He's able to undo all that hard work. Uh, <laughs> that, but it uh, well, looks like uh, a really fortunate draw for Zach as he's actually able to find the Guzma, able to bring up that Type Null. And uh, it does have a lot of HP for an evolving basic, but it's 110. That's still enough for Glyspod to KO it. Yeah, indeed. So we do see Zach goes for the Guzma, targets down the Type Null, takes another prize here. Both players playing at rapid pace, really because their hand can only take them so far. <laughs> uh, Israel still failing to draw into anything too useful. He does find himself double colorless energy so maybe even attacking with the Kartana could be something he goes for on the next couple of turns uh, just being hopeful but for now he's going to keep on chugging with this turbo arm trying to set up as much energy as possible on the bench and he's also thinking you know what this Kabalion could start coming in important seeing as though Zach's starting to take prize cards yeah absolutely so uh, Kabalion of course is one of these, uh, has one of these attacks that again does more damage for mm -hmm. each prize card uh, your opponent has taken now if Zach were to take a prize here although I'm not even sure how he'd do that would he actually have enough to take the finish it off with Kabalion yeah so Kabalion's revenge blast attack deals 30 plus 30 more for each prize card your opponent's taken so it would go to 120 damage and uh, plus 90 is exactly enough so it, it is um, Zach has to be careful if he wants to keep taking prize cards here because yeah. it could walk into Israel's plans yeah although well, having said that I don't as we mentioned already Red Shield does have 130 HP mm -hmm. so even if Zach was able to trigger yeah. extra damage first impression it wouldn't happen he would have to attach double colors and crossing cut essentially yeah and it uh, looks like he's content to simply do the first impression for 30 because that puts him in range. Yeah, it does. And there is the out for Israel. Finally sees the Ultra Ball. He's going to be able to <laughs> use that as Grand Style tap it later, and he's going to do Wonder Tag and I imagine this is going to be for a Sycamore. We have a game. Thank goodness. <laughs> Huge sigh of relief from Israel as he's able to use that Wonder Tag to find Professor Sycamore. He still has bench space to top uh, to start looking for things like top, type null. They were so important in the first game where he was able to win. Uh, so that's something he's going to look to establish here. Yeah. And... Um, at the moment, the Ready Steel is still stuck in the active position, so we'll only see another turbo arm this turn. Uh, but he's going to hopefully get some more attackers going on on the board. I don't know about you, Joe, but to me, with the way I see this board state right now, the crazy thing is, it looks like Israel was just so far behind in terms of you know how little he's able to work with for so long. But he is not out of this game. Yeah, that's the ridiculous thing of turbo arm. You just have so much energy on the board. <laughs> they're not the ideal attackers for Israel, but they're still attackers. They're still dangerous uh, in the right situations. The Ready Steel is having an annoying amount of HP for Golisopod in particular. He could have a few turns here still. Yeah, not only that, but that Necrozma is posing yep. a bit of a threat now because another turbo arm does put the Glyspot up to... Oh, uh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> never mind. There is the Acer Roller. Uh, he does have another Wimpod on the bench, which he might evolve. He has to think twice about it at this point. But no, he doesn't think twice. He just <laughs> no. puts it straight onto the board. He's not worried about no Necrozma. He probably didn't uh, even think once. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and uh, we are going to see the Wimpod as well in his hand. It will probably replay down... Um, and uh, stacking Grass Energy all over his board, trying to get more first impressions in. We're going to see the free retreat from the Tapu Koko going into the Glycopod that he's just evolved and uh, going to be able to take a knockout with first impression here. Yeah, so there it is. The Red Shield goes down. One more prize for Zach. And now it looks like Israel is going to be promoting that Kartana GX. Are we going to see it go back into the deck? <laughs> it's Kartana time. So he's going to be looking to find himself a double colorless energy. It also only has the one retreat cost. So it gives him the most flexibility from any other Pokemon he could have promoted. Seeing as though his list is typically at least hoping to have Sil Valley in play to make it an easy choice. Now it's much more difficult when you don't have that online. Israel does opt to put a Zeru onto the bench instead of a Type Null, um, thinking that maybe Zorak can be an out later on in the game. Yeah. And uh, it's going to be big to see yeah. if he can get double colorless here. Yeah. Now, I think we should we should mention, you said that uh, obviously Israel would like to dig for a double colorless here, uh, potentially to use Gale Blade. Um, no, I'm, only... thinking, I'm thinking Black Ray at this point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh. Oh, of course he can just yeah. swing. <laughs> <laughs> if he could swing 200 damage on this board, it could be really awkward because you can only ace a roller one target at once. Looks like the end wasn't kind to him. No. Only drawing five cards, not quite getting him there. So 
again, it's another awkward turn for yeah. him. No, what I was going to say, though, is uh, if he did, did, did do Gale Blade, uh, it, it's not a very impressive attack. No. To, as it looks like 70 damage uh, for free energy. But he can, with the optional effect of the attack is you can shuffle Castellana back into the deck while cards is hatched, and then he can maybe use that to rebench it and maybe discard a double colorless later on. That's, yeah, that's, uh, that's very true. So we are going to see the retreat of the Kartana GX. There was a choice band attached to the Cabalion, so we are going to see a Revenge Blast here. Uh, three prizes being taken for Zac. Not going to be a knockout, but a big chunk here. And again, it looks like Israel's trying to set up this Necrozma. Yeah, so the ideal situation for him would be either to... He, he can approach it one of two ways. He can maybe try and go for the Black Green next turn and then try and uh, finish off the, the Goliath Spot after that. Or maybe he just goes uh, all in with the strategy. Maybe tries to soften up the other Goliath Spot and then go for the Black Ray. And uh, looks like Zac doesn't have a great hand. He has Guzma, so he can take his pick of what he would like to start targeting. There's also a couple of Field Blower in his hand, but it really doesn't take him much further than that. Uh, so we're going to see a Floatstone getting attached to the Wimpod. I think he's just trying to play down as many cards as he can, assuming that there will be ends incoming in the future. But what's his best target here with the Guzma? He can't take knockouts on many things. This is the only target he could take a prize on um, with the Guzma. So that's what he's opting to bring up. And uh, uh, it's going to be a first impression once again. I wonder which one he's going to go into. Looks like he's happy to sacrifice this Glycopod in order to take a prize here. Yeah. And uh, this is actually going to pay off for him because, uh, again, assuming that he takes prizes in the normal order people do, oh boy. that, that Tapu Lele is sitting pretty. <laughs> <laughs> Tapu Lele would indeed be the next prize he were to take uh, if he goes in the usual manner. And that's exactly what he's taken. So that's a big, big thing for Zach to pick up. So it's down to Israel to see if he can, again, end this turn to maybe deny um, late game players. We're going to see a Guzma from him going into the Cabalion. He's going for the exact strategy we were thinking of, isn't he? Yep. So he's uh, trying to get a big revenge blast off once again another prize for Zach so just two remaining which means this Cabalion will be doing 180 damage oh no the, the uh, choice band's been taken off so it'll yeah. be 150 uh, sort of negating the fact that the field blower was played yeah. now the one unfortunate thing that for Israel what I was about to say is what he could do it, it, it would be hilarious but it's not possible is uh, Black Ray and then Blade but of course they're both GX attacks <laughs> so you can't do that you can't just take four prizes and then finish off a Blade next turn you would have to KO something else after doing the Black Ray so Zach with the potential Guzma in hand he actually top deck a Lele, which makes it a lot less exciting ah. but if he were to have drawn a, a energy card he could have gone for a Guzma into a GX attack to win him the game wasn't able to do that so it looks like he's going to grab himself an Acerola one of the best combinations that you can do with Glycopod undoing so much damage he has two heavily damaged Glycopods and yeah. he wants to get rid of this because there's an incoming Black Ray for sure yeah he recognises that Necrozma is a threat he knows that if he just leaves that unchecked or rather if he doesn't mitigate for it that mm -hmm. is going to come back to come back to bite him so going for that Acerola I imagine we picking up uh, the active Gly I mean no actually which, which Glycopod do you pick up here I think it's yeah. reasonable to do both, in all honesty, but because you want to damage and KO the Cabalion this turn, you have to do the active so you can um, bring up the new one. Yeah. And he may still go to Tapu Koko. That's always just his ritual, making sure he has every option available to him to still make new decisions. Interesting that he's going to attach to the new Wimpod on the bench. Ooh. He's actually reconsidering this. Yeah. I think this indicates that he won't be evolving... Um, the Floatstone Wimpod into a Glycopod because yeah. he's just so aware of Black Ray at this point. Yeah, you might so, want to see, um, might want to see if this uh, one Glycopod that's already there can carry him through. Um, in other circumstances, there is... Yeah, it's a very tricky decision he's faced with here because, again, we've, as we just said, we know we know that he knows that Black Ray is a threat. Mm -hmm. And actually, yeah, he's going to opt to attach the uh, Grass Energy to the Wimpod that can't evolve yet. Uh, he could even Field Blower the Choice Band on his own Tapu Koko if he wants to thin one extra card from his hand. He's not opting to do that, though. Keeping it for a rainy day, nothing yeah. wrong with that. But we do see the first impression finally dealing with that Cabalion, the only real attack Israel has had to offer uh, throughout this game, keeping him in it. But we do see him now. He's going to try and stabilize once again with the N. Uh, there's two energy currently on the Necrozma GX, so just one more, and he can use that Black Ray, not only knocking out the Golisopod, but also putting 100 damage on the bench Tapu Lele. So. Yeah. And that's exactly why he didn't evolve. If he'd mm -hmm. evolved into the Glycopod, there would have been three things that would yeah. have taken 100 damage. And then at that point, Israel has a lot of different things he could target down to win the game. As it stands, not so much. Yeah, it's one of those catch-22 situations where now he doesn't have... He has to draw into a Glycopod to keep attacking uh, because he didn't evolve into it. But, you know, he's saving himself 100 damage on that Glycopod. And yeah. that could end up being too detrimental later yeah. on in the game. But it looks like he doesn't have energy here. He misses the energy. It was an absolutely huge whiff. Wow. He plays 12 total energy, four of them being double colorless and still not able to find one. He finally gets himself 
a, uh, a type null here. He can pay retreat on the Necrozma. It has a two retreat cost, but Bit. yeah, he doesn't have it. Uh, right. Zach shows off the double colorless, and that's game. That is indeed game. So we'll, we'll be moving on to game three. Wow, what a nail biter. Yeah, so off the end to one, Zach was able to find himself the double colorless, and uh, it really s uh, seemed that Israel didn't ever really get set up. He was only getting type nulls in one of uh, each time and Zach was very proactive in trying to deal with them not allowing the Sil Valley to get into play as we saw in the first game that was able to run riot and get too many energy on the board throughout the game Israel just dead drew for a few turns even though he was getting lots of energy into play with turbo arms they weren't the ideal attackers and it wasn't the ideal setup for him yeah no so this is this is all it comes down to folks game three of round nine <laughs> one game is uh, both of these players rather one game away from potentially making it into day two again and who will it be? Will it be Israel or will it be Zach? It's such a Cinderella story for both players as well. Both players picking their own little pet decks. <laughs> uh, Zach choosing to play the 1-1 one, one Gumshoes. He made it popular in the Goliathopod deck. And Israel, he was one of the big people talking about Sil Valley, making it a known quantity, saying, hey guys, this is a really, really good card. You need to keep an eye out for it. Showing it today, bringing it to the table and doing really well with it, but will he make day two with his own deck? I would like to draw attention uh, to as well the fact that I've, actually chat I've had the pleasure of talking with both of these gentlemen at the World Championships a couple of times. Both just genuinely really yeah. lovely. Yeah, I was chatting to Zach. He's in our same hotel and I was chatting to him. He's been testing all sorts of decks. He was testing with juniors and seniors, so he's not just thinking about his own performance is he's thinking about um, all sorts of people he's just one of those great guys in the community who he's lovely to talk to from anyone a beginner and the best player in the world it doesn't matter when you're talking to Zach because he's just such a great guy to chat to yeah and, and from my side my anecdote about Israel is that actually when I went to Worlds there was something I wanted to get so I actually had it ordered to his house and it, <laughs> it, it missed the post box so he went and like drove all, out all oh, the way to his house to pick it up for me to, to like deliver it to me I mean and he like barely even knew me it's like really <laughs> just genuinely lovely guy so we do see him he's got a much better start this time oh, he's yes. been able to discard a metal energy all important uh, so you can get acceleration with all of your attackers he's also been able to find a choice band as well as a double colors for his type null and a big professor sycamore here to refresh his hand he also has a turtonator gx we haven't seen in either of the two games so far but it's still potentially a really good option against the Golisopod. so he chooses to hold it for now keep it a secret um but he has that in the locker if he needs to for future turns yeah, definitely. Golisopod is the exact reason why he would consider playing turtonator mm -hmm. it's just a very yeah. it's just a better way of dealing with Golisopod, which is a really big threat to them. Now, from Zach's side, he does start with Tapulele, so, and he's eyeing up the Bridget, so, yeah, it looks like we're going to have a proper game here. Both players are going to be able to set up to the max maximum efficacy, and not only that, we have 20 minutes left of this game. Yeah, so. 20 minutes on the clock. The game has been topsy-turvy, back and forth. Normally, it's a big old prize race where both people can take prizes very quickly, and when they're targeting specific targets with Guzma as well, so we've seen fast-paced games for the first two, even though players weren't drawing optimally. Both players playing at a very good pace here, and uh, I imagine this could be a third game concluded because no one wants to see a tie at this point. No, no of course not. A tie would not help either of them. So with that, uh, off of the Bridget, Jax is going to grab himself two Impods and a Remoraid. He's got some energy to attach. It'll be interesting to see where he actually puts this. One option could be to uh, attach to the active, do a flying flip, just to soften some, uh, soften some things up. Or he could just attach to a grass to the bench. But he does indeed go for the flying flip option. Yeah, flying flip, the only attack he can really do this turn other than something like an energy drive. Um, but seeing as the Tapu Koko, so efficient and um, has a free retreat cost, it's just the safest bet to go for. We are going to see over to Israel. He's able to pick up the Silvalli GX, which was a really big top deck for him. That was actually huge. That enabled <laughs> everything. His hand was actually really bad if he didn't have yeah. that. As it stands, he's able to retreat the Zora, bring up the Silvalli. He's got the energy to attack. So there goes the turbo drive, attaching to the Turtonator. That is about as perfect a turn as Israel could have asked for. And I love that it was just a stonewall reaction. He was like, yeah, of course I had the Silvalli in yeah. hand. Of course, my, of course my turn was excellent. Yeah. It's not like I had nothing before yeah. my top deck. So. Uh, yeah, for any of you watching at home, if you want to like look at textbook poker face, there <laughs> your man <laughs> yeah there we go so uh, it not only is it annoying that there's a prize being taken on israel so zach's a little bit behind he's also had to promote a pokemon that has a retreat cost always awkward when you're trying to jump into the active position as the Glycopod deck so often is trying to go for. So we do see the Ultra Ball from Zach. He's going to establish that Octillery, as we've seen him do in all of his games. He does have more energy to attach, and it's going to be an Abyssal Hand here for a few cards. He does also have a clean end that he can be going for in response here. 
Yeah, and uh, we see the uh, choice band and a grass engine committed onto the bench Wimpod. Yeah, there goes the abyssal hand. Looks like he finds himself a gumshoe GX. A couple of supporters, another Wimpod, it looks like. He does find himself a Guzma. If he wants to guarantee that he can move into the active, that could be the play for him. Not too many targets that look juicy on his bench. So, yeah, it looks like Zach's just yeah. going to be content to use the end. He can still find Floatstone off of this and get damage on the most important attacker on Israel's side of the field. Yeah, the problem with the Guzma is that he didn't actually have anything he was involved in to, to do any damage with. So oh, yeah, that's yeah, true. He, so he kind of <laughs> needed the end there because there was no Glycopod to do anything with. So we are going to see Zach shuffling up, drawing six for himself, five for Israel. It was actually not too bad for Israel because we knew that he didn't actually have much else in his hand other than just basic metal energy beyond that. So Israel actually also getting a little bit of benefit from this, especially because he was able to draw into a pretty nice hand at this point. <laughs> oh, my so, goodness. Uh, that is, oh, oh, is he drawn too much off the end there? No, I think he's fine. I believe it was only five. Let's just uh, double check that. We can check that uh, with the... Oh, wow. Oh, dear. Uh-oh. Oh, no. All right, hold on. Just Play has stopped here. We have to uh, make sure because we know there's uh, new rulings in the Pokemon training card game that recently did come into effect. If you are someone who draws an extra card, you are punished more severely. This is a new <laughs> update, and oh, it's rough that this has happened to Israel at this point, but this has to be something that we do resolve. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> We've gone all day without big judge rulings, yep. but it's come right to the end. <laughs> yeah. And unfortunately, Israel here, it's a blushing moment for him. He's drawn six cards, even though he has taken a prize. It's just so natural that you uh, shuffle and draw six. That's yeah. what typically you think N is in your own head. But when you start taking these prizes, um, yeah. it gets a little bit worse for you. So I believe that under the new rulings, that's a prize penalty for um, Israel. And that would mean Zach can get an extra card here and uh, even up the prize trade. And also it's now a reveal and shuffle is yes. the new ruling. Yes, it is. So that card won't even be put at the top of the deck. And you can see by Israel's facial expressions, they kind of say it all here. Yeah. It's, got, it's very much a head slap moment. And it looks like it's, uh, they're going to sort of get over someone else to sort of confirm the ruling, I imagine. It looks like they're just trying to make sure that they get the... Uh, the, the application of the ruling right in the circumstance. Yeah, it looks like um, there'll be a time extension if it does go too long, but we just want to make sure everything's right while we are on stream. This is the most important round where we have to get stuff right, of course. Yeah. It looks like, at the very least, what we could say is that Israel has more than one playable card in his six-card hand. So yeah. if one card in particular is revealed and replaced, he'll still have stuff to do next turn. Yeah. Um, but it's just a, one of those really awkward situations where <laughs> it's horrible to see it in these circumstances. Um, but it's just part of the game. Unfortunately, you have to keep track of these things. It is your responsibility as a player. Yeah. And um, we just have to do our due diligence here. Um, Zach uh, did retreat into the Tapu Lele, but we have pause play. So it essentially, we'll come down to Zach basically has to announce his attack to end his turn. But before we do that, we have to resolve this issue. Yeah, it's... Um... <laughs> I'm trying to think of uh, if I've been in any sort of uh, similar situations in the past. I think I remember I put out eight prize cards in a game once. <laughs> I'm not quite sure how I did that, but uh, that was amusing to say the least. So, it, what, do you have any? Do you have, do you have any anecdotes? You, Nick, you are the, the worst cheater, making making winning harder for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> that is the best way to cheat at the Pokemon trading card game. But no, I don't have many stories. I know I've drawn an extra card here and I've been punished for it. Uh, that was just an accidental thing. That yeah. was when I was a beginner in the game and stuff like that. But, uh, yeah, it's just something that isn't uh, a part of the game. And uh, really, um, it's one of those blushing moments more than anything. We know Israel's been on stream many times. But, you know, it's a high-pressure situation. It's the end of the day. Mistakes yeah. happen. Yeah, yeah, they do absolutely happen. And uh, it looks like the judges are just having a discussion now. It, when rulings like this come back, one thing I always like to do, and I think that uh, it is overdue, we should really give uh, thanks to all of the judges and the volunteers who yeah. put, take their time out to you know, come together and make this event happen. Without the judges, the tournament could not happen. They're the ones to make sure everything keeps running smoothly, to make sure any players' queries are answered. And they really don't get enough thanks, I feel. And they do it with a smile always as well. Yeah. They're lovely people. Uh, in and outside the game so it's just amazing to have so many of them dedicated I think there was uh, 20 or so countries 20 different countries of judges yeah that's right uh, so I mean everyone from around the world just dedicating their time to this entire weekend of Pokemon just for the love of the game yeah definitely so I mean so I guess excusing that in mind the current state of the game who do we think is more likely to win uh, to me it looks like it could really go either way right now I mean, both players have got a fairly decent setup it's uh, we were saw there as you mentioned already Israel's hand is still playable even after one of the cards gets shuffled back so yeah what do you what do you think yeah I think it's still early in the game as we've seen Acerola is still a big deciding factor so someone could be ahead on board state right now but that could change as Acerola's are played it looks like we are seeing the um, judge is shuffling Israel's deck, so there has been a reveal and shuffle. Zach has taken a prize card as the penalty for Israel's error, and we will be seeing now um, 
a first impression it looks like for 150 damage seeing as though he did retreat from the Tapu Lele this turn yeah does this all discussing something else with the judge maybe the is a something else that happened maybe that I need to talk about I think uh, we're just making sure that everything's good to go and we can continue with the game um, both players you know this is one of these things you don't want to rush yeah um, of course especially because it's a new ruling we need to make sure that everyone's fully aware and happy with this outcome and uh, we there, there do just see play resume with the um, first impression for 150 damage yeah absolutely so in return there Israel are gonna we're gonna be able to use the field blood there to scout both the choice band and the float stone and then gonna play the ultra ball scouting another ultra ball and a metal energy he's gonna be able to find himself a Zoroark and uh, this is actually it's funny because if he is able to evolve that other Zoroark into a Zoroark he can actually make that price penalty kind of irrelevant because he can force <laughs> Zach to just KO free GX Pokemon anyway I mean prizes are always a big thing but yeah. uh we are going to see him, you know, starting to develop his side of the board at the very least. We're going to see the first trade from the Zorak GX. Looks like he drew into a couple of awkward cards here. He does have himself an attachment, not quite a double color synergy. So maybe onto the Turtonator. It looks like he's going to set up for future turns and allow this Sil Valley to get knocked out. Yeah, so there goes with the uh, Turbo Drive. We're going to do 120 to the Glycopod and uh, attaching onto the Necrozma again. Just making sure that just making sure it's, he's aware, you know, making sure that Zach doesn't get a little, a little bit too overeager thinking, oh, you know, it's fine. No, it's not fine. You've got to, <laughs> got to, we've got to be wary of it. Yeah, you've got to be dealing with all these sorts of factors. And um, we are going to see Zach. Play goes over to him. We find a Choice Band on the Wimpod. He does have another Wimpod, a couple of... Guzma and also a Kukui as well as Sycamore. He's got a hand stacked with supporters. He has his pick and looks like he's opting to go for Professor Sycamore as his choice, looking to find maybe things like Floatstone, maybe double colors energy to finish off the Sil Valley here. Yeah, just because uh, just doing 30 alone will, won't be enough. It'll be just that little yeah. bit short. So you would have to, if he finds a choice band or did he, did he actually miss? I think he's actually in a bit of a spot here. I don't think he can even thin his hand size enough for an artillery to draw him out. Maybe with a field blower, just he can have one draw uh, to maybe get him that. Yeah. We are seeing things add up here. There's but the field blow. It's a big single card draw from Abyssal Hands. Can exactly it bail him out? Floatstone, it's Kukui! Oh.